Hi students, thanks so much for joining us today. I want to just introduce our panelists who are gonna be speaking with us. Uh, we have Maddie, who is a 2020 graduate of Daniel Hand, uh, attending a small private liberal arts college. We have Gabby, who is a 2019 Daniel Hand graduate who is attending an out of state college of art and design. And we have Sophie, who is a 2019 uh, Daniel Han graduate who is attending a large out of state public university. And this webinar came about because we sent out a survey to your parents and actually asked if they had any questions or needed support uh, throughout this uh, pandemic um, that we've been living through. And they had quite a few questions in regards to the college selection process. And in speaking with uh, the guidance department, uh, we decided that it would be a great idea to have some students actually come in and speak to you as upcoming uh, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, because you're ultimately going to be the ones making these college selection decisions with your parents. So we wanted to give a voice to them and we wanted you to be able to hear some of their experiences. So tonight we're gonna to be going through some questions, again, that um, were raised by uh, parents and also with um, student input. And they're going to be answering um, some of their, giving you some of their experiences in um, how they selected a college and kind of going through their process over the last year to two years in college. So the first question that we have tonight is, um, did you have difficulty deciding on a major to pursue in college? And we'll start with you, Maddie. Um, so my school that I go to doesn't like we don't declare until the end of sophomore year. So I haven't had to pick a major yet, but I've definitely just like, I've changed my mind so many times on what I'm like gonna do. And I've gone from like math to now I'm doing biology and chemistry with like a ton of stuff in between. So like, I definitely, I think it's definitely very normal to like not know what you wanna do yet. Um, I kind of knew what I wanted to do, but I think the difficulty wasn't um, deciding it, it was more getting my parents on board because, you know, I, I wanted to go into art and there's kind of this perception that, you know, it's more of like a, um, like a risky major and career path, which thankfully isn't true. Um, there's a big range of, you know, art and design careers out there that are a lot more stable than people think they are. So I think the difficulty wasn't deciding for myself, but it was convincing my parents, which thankfully they came around. Um, I've always been interested in the sciences and I also knew that I wanted to um, go pre-med. I think the difficult part for me was choosing a major that um, fit well with pre-med requirements, but that was also interesting to me. So for me, it was more of a matter of like coming to school and feeling out what classes would be best for that track. And then also just deciding like what I would be happy taking. So I think something really important could just be um, thinking about what you want to do in life, going in with that approach, and then um, deciding once you get to school, what would fit best with that. Good, good answers, girls. Our next question is, what approach would you recommend if a student has two very different majors that they think they're interested in, such as a creative field and an unrelated technical field? Maddie? Um, for me, it was like, very important to go to a school that allowed you to do like all different types of things. I didn't want to apply to a school that like made you apply to a certain college within the university that was all science or all like humanities. So if you have different interests like that, I think that finding a school that allows you to like explore both those different interests is very important. I kind of had this problem for a little bit actually, because um, like I said before, we kind of, there's this perception that art isn't really like, um, like a stable career to go in. So I was always kind of told to like, do something else. So I always kind of had this idea that maybe I would go into chemistry because that was like the the kind of more like sciencey thing that I enjoyed, even though I'm not that good at it. But um, I ended up going to tour. Um, my aunt is a chemist. So I ended up just kind of taking a tour of like her, her company and her workspace with her. And I just remember going there and I knew I was like, I can't do this. Like I can never be a chemist. I have to be an artist. 
So I think just exploring more about not only what the major is going to be and what the classes are going to be, but what, what paths it can lead to and what you're going to be doing when you get out of college beyond is important to consider too. Yeah, I agree with both Maddie and Gabby. I think it's really important to choose a school that offers you the option to take a lot of general education classes and you can take ones of the two majors that you're really torn between. Um, and then you can just feel out how you like, how you feel in either of the courses. And a lot of times the general education classes end up fitting like school requirements too, like in order to graduate. So don't feel like you're behind if you're taking a lot of general education classes just to see if you like them because that's something really important that you should do so that you pick the correct major for you. So our next question is, how did you determine if a college was a safety, a reasonable fit or a reach for you? Um, I looked a lot at like average SAT scores and average GPA and then I also spent so much time on like the Na Naviance like scattergrams just like comparing myself to like other hand students that have applied because I feel like that gives you a better idea because like there are other kids from the high school and that definitely helped me figure that out. Um, I agree with Maddie that I definitely looked at the scattergrams but I also think art school it's a little harder because it's less about SAT scores and grades and it's more about your portfolio and you know, like the artwork that you have to show for the college, which is a little more, um, it's a little more subjective than like a, a number that's like an SAT score, or like a GPA. Um, so it's a little harder to tell. I think looking at acceptance rates um, and also thinking about not just um, like, safeties in terms of like can you get in but also can you afford it is important you know like what would it mean if you got in like would you be traveling across the country all the time um you know you got to factor that in as well too you know i'm out of state so travel was kind of something i factored in and also um just for like more going back to the more subjective kind of process that comes with like a portfolio um there are a lot of really good resources out there on the internet of, you know, other people who have shown their portfolios, you know, shown where they've gotten accepted or like rejected from, and just looking around at, just looking at other people's work and just, just doing your research to kind of figure out where you fall. Um, I also use Naviance a lot and um, checked like the average GPA and average test scores. Um, and something that also really helped me was to look at the area, like how many kids that from hand were accepted, because a lot of the um, schools that I was applying to were like big public universities, um, like state universities. And a lot of times the acceptance rates are different based on where you're from, like it, they might accept more students from that state than others. Um, so that was definitely a big factor, just trying to remind myself that it might be harder for me to get in just because I am out of state. Our next question, how did you decide how many colleges to tour? Um, I, I toured a lot of colleges, but like a lot of that was based on um, like location and timing. So I toured like, tons of schools um, near me and then not so many like far away. So I think it's just like, depends on if you uh, really want to go out of state or like other side of the country and that kind of helps you pick how many are like worth it to go see um i second what maddie said too i think the way i really decided actually wasn't really me it was more my mom um because thankfully i have a mom who's like very on top of all this stuff she was pushing me to tour colleges before i even knew what i wanted to do or where i wanted to go so i thankfully had that little push from her um, and that actually that really helped me figure out and kind of kind of like force myself to do it because it's not always something you really want to do. You know, thinking about college, it's kind of daunting. I think having that push was really helpful for me to get over that, you know, kind of initial like fear of looking into it. I think if you have the opportunity to tour a school, I would definitely tour it just because I know after going through COVID, a lot of the incoming like freshmen this year felt like they were kind of at a disadvantage because they didn't have the opportunity to tour a lot of schools that they wanted to see. And I think a lot of it also comes down to how many schools you apply to. 
Um, so if you apply to them and you haven't yet toured them, like you could decide to tour the ones that you're actually the most interested in or think you have the best chance of getting into. Um, if it really comes down to you deciding like which is um, more important for you to tour than others. Our last question in this section is when did you begin researching and touring colleges? I think I started researching colleges um, end of sophomore year and then I started touring schools um, in like the fall of junior year and then I did like most of my tours the end of junior year. Um, I'm trying to remember because it's been a little bit. I think it was mostly um, it was it was probably junior year probably like around just just throughout the whole thing. I think maybe I toured more in like winter to spring. I remember over spring break, I went some places. Um, I know my sister, she started touring a little younger just cause she's younger than me. So she was coming along on some of these tours. Um, my older brother ended up going to community college. So he didn't really tour. So I didn't really get that experience until I was kind of the first one in my family. So my sister got brought along with me. <laughs> um my experience started like so young because at first I wanted to play a sport in college and um normally for that you're supposed to start looking like at such a young age that you can get recruited so I started touring colleges um probably at like freshman year but like I didn't start like researching and like find out I'm like generally interested or like genuinely interested in them until like sophomore year probably and then started going on actual tours and what Gabby said it kind of sounds crazy to like go with like your older siblings because you do feel like you're so young and like why should you be looking if they just started but it's such a good opportunity to just go walk around because universities and colleges don't change that much over time so you're gonna remember it and you'll just have the same experience so as soon as you can start start but honestly like waiting until your junior is also okay going off of that too i also think it makes it a little less scary when you're going with like an older sibling because there's not really the pressure there for like you to be paying too much attention but at the same time you kind of are starting to get an idea without having any of the pressure on like your opinions of it good point all right so our next um area that we want to talk about is actually the college tour so first question um for you maddie is how did you organize your college tours um i like I did most of my tours spring break of junior year. So we did like 10 in like that whole week. And so we organized it by just like, we drew a little map and just like however, like however you could get there. And I think like finding schools that are close to each other and doing them at the same time, that's a good way to organize it. Um, again, I think I got really lucky in that my mom was all on top of this. She was planning it all out before I even like was thinking about it. So she was doing most of the organization, but I remember I did, we did spring break of junior year. We went through, we went to a few schools. Um, I had a few like off days from school. I think it was like professional development or like MLK days and stuff like that, where I would, my dad would just drive me and like some of my friends out to like Rhode Island to like look at a school or I ended up flying down um, over like um, a long weekend down to the school I'm in now. Um, but just using those, using those off days I had, um, and they actually ended up being fun. You know, they were fun experiences. Um, I don't really, I, I don't really think of them as like, you know, like school, like college things. I, I remember them more as like fun memories I had with my friends. So if you have a friend who's, you know, interested in a similar field or like similar school, you know, going together can make it, can make it a lot more fun. My college tours were so random. So don't feel like you have to have like anything organized because honestly, I didn't want to go that far from home. So it made it easier that like we could just do a day trip or like turn a vacation into stopping at a school or just like whenever you're driving anywhere, if you just want to like drive through a school, go for it. Um, but I honestly didn't really organize mine. It was just kind of random. Like if I wanted to go see a school, um, mine were all in driving range mostly. So it was easy just to pop in or just like on the way back from like the beach or anything really. And how did you get the most out of your tours when you were on them? 
Um, I think it's important to definitely pay attention because I think most tours are organized where they'll do a tour and then they'll do an information session or like vice versa. And I know it can be like really boring to sit through like an hour long information session that like it's pretty much all the same across the colleges at this point. But like it is important to like pay attention to those like differences because that'll really that'll help you like make your decision. Like I said earlier, I think going with friends can make it a lot more fun and kind of make you a lot more engaged in, you know, actually looking around around you. Um, I think also um, I'm kind of bad at paying attention sometimes. So I would most of the time, instead of paying attention to the tour people, I would just be looking around at like, you know, what everyone was doing around me. If there were students on campus, what were they up to? Um, also just things like exploring the area, like, maybe going to get lunch at like a local restaurant or something like that. You know, um, just just taking in the information the college gives you, but also looking outside of that because every college is trying to present themselves as best as they can, not necessarily as realistic as they can. So I think it's also important to take in the information that you're not just being given, but that you just kind of see around you as well. Um. My advice, and this kind of sounds like crazy, but like go like whenever you have a tour guide, like stand in the front, like be in the front of your group, because if you fall behind, like you'll just stop listening or like you'll just like look around or whatever. But if you're in the front, you're forced to pay attention and you can hear everything that the tour guide is saying. And honestly, the best tours I had is when I was in the front, like genuinely listening to what they had to say. Um, and I also like, I love what Gabby said. I think it is like really important to like get the experience, like walk around campus, even after your tour, like experience things without someone telling you or like go grab lunch or do anything. Um, and then take someone with you that would like wants to listen. Like, I know I had like my dad with me and my mom with me and like every time like we would go someplace, they would like pick up the pamphlet and like have it with them. And if they're interested and like engaged, then I would also feel interested and engaged and like if your parents are there, you're not going to like be sitting on your phone or anything, or even if your friends are there, like you'll be more inclined to listen and give them a chance. So I think hopefully we're coming to the end of this, but um, given the COVID restrictions um, and that they could still be in place, you know, this summer and possibly beginning of next fall, how can the class of 2022 get an idea of what a campus and surrounding area are like without an actual visit? So I go to the one school that I didn't tour. So I feel like, I don't know, I feel like you really can get an idea without a visit. And especially because um, I graduated high school last year. So all of my like acceptance days were virtual and they, they put a lot of effort into like making those feel like you're there. Like they'll, I know someone like walked around campus with like their computer out, like looking. So we could all kind of just like see what it looked like. Um, and so like, especially if it's an even playing field like that, like if you can't go to all of your schools, then at least you know that like the schools are going to try to help you understand what it's really like there. And also talking to students there is also a good idea. Oh, sorry. I forgot it was my turn for some reason. I was looking at Sophie. Um, I think so I was lucky enough that when I was graduating and going to school, COVID was not a thing yet. Um, I think a really good way of getting an idea of what a campus and your life at a school is going to be like without necessarily visiting, or if you are visiting, it's also a good idea as well. Um, this sounds kind of weird, but like stalk the students on like social media a little bit. Look up, go on YouTube, like look up like blank college like vlogs. Try to see what every, like just regular people are doing every day. Go on Instagram, go to like the location tag, search up like the campus, look at like pictures people are posting. Um, I think it's a really good way to get an idea of what a place is gonna be like. That's not just, you know, the, the photos, the beautiful photos that the school is gonna put on their website. It kind of gives you a more realistic and more kind of like fruity and in-depth view of what life would actually be like at a school. I agree with Maddie. I think a lot of schools like took the initiative to make like virtual things. Um, it's really easy to find um, maps of schools and videos of schools. Um, and I also think it's really important to think about like what type of campus you want because 
if you're talking about like a surrounding area and you want a city, it's easy to search like what Boston's like, what DC is like, what New York's like, like you can really find like what any city is like and then um, kind of make your decision based off of that. Our last category for uh, this evening is selecting a college. So our first question is, how did you decide how many colleges to apply to? Um, I applied to like 20 schools, which was kind of a lot and <laughs> was a lot of work. So maybe don't do that. But um, a lot of schools have like the same types of questions. So like it was kind of easy to just write one really general pro like essay and then just change some things in there. So I think that definitely helped on like applying to a lot of schools. But if it's like more complicated applications and definitely limit the amount of schools you're applying to the schools that you are genuinely interested in. So I feel like I applied to a lot of schools I didn't really have any interest in. So I feel like that's important. <laughs> I had a long list as well, but I actually ended up kind of thinking more about it and thinking about kind of like what Maddie said, like schools I was actually interested in. So what I ended up doing is I made a list of 12 and then I chose six of them that I applied to. And then based off of how that went, I was gonna maybe apply to the other ones or maybe not. I ended up not applying to any of them. Um, I only applied to the six, um, but it ended up being more than enough for me. So I think maybe breaking it down into sections can help. Yeah, I had um, probably like 15 schools that I wanted to apply to, and I think I ended up applying to like 11. And I think something that worked for me was separating them um, between like my safeties, my reaches, and like good fits. Um, because once I applied to like a few safeties, I like heard back like relatively soon, like before other applications were even due. And so it was like easy to like find out like if I was accepted to one, I might not have to apply to another, um, which makes it easier. And I, something that helped me is I had like a list of like the schools and their prompts and keep like a spreadsheet of all the essays you write because it's really easy to use them for one or another and it might help you narrow down how many you have to apply for. Uh, how did you narrow down? I think you guys kind of picked, you talked about how you narrowed it down to apply to, but how did you narrow down your choices and make your final college selection? Um, I'm really lucky. I got into a lot of the schools I wanted to get into, but when it came down to it, like I just, I knew as soon as I got the acceptance from the school I'm at, and it was like before I got a lot of other acceptances still, but it's just like, like you can like, I don't know, I've heard people say like, oh, you should look at pros and cons for each one, but I feel like a lot of people just like have a gut feeling that like this is the school they want, which you might not believe until you actually apply, but like I knew. I kind of agree with Maddie. Um, what ended up happening for me was the school I'm at now, they do rolling admission um, and they have kind of a high acceptance rate. So I kind of, I, I had a feeling I was gonna get in um, and I ended up getting my acceptance in like October and I was like, I didn't know if I was going to go, but I was like, oh, like, I'm so happy. Like, I at least got into one college. Like, I'm at least going to college somewhere. Um, but I ended up kind of thinking on that more, you know, as I was applying to other schools. And then in January, I went to visit. And as soon as I came down here to visit, like, I knew I was like, this is where I'm going. This, this just, it, it just felt right. It, it's a gut feeling, I feel like for some, for not everybody, but for some people. Uh, yeah, I agree with Gabby. Like, you don't think it's like, everyone tells you it's a gut feeling and like, you're never going to believe anyone until you actually feel it. And I was between two schools and the thing that helped me the most was going to Acceptance Students Day. And I flew out to one Acceptance Students Day. I didn't like it at all. Like, I did not have fun. Like, and I just knew, and then I went to the other one and it was so fun, like best time, loved it, stepped on campus and I knew it was for me. So if accepted students days, accepted students day is a thing when you're applying to colleges, I definitely recommend that um, because it really helped me make my decision. And our last question in this category is, was the college you selected, I think we answered this one, but was it a good fit for you and why or why not? Okay, so I've only been at school during the pandemic, so I really have no idea <laughs> at this point. I really, I really like it, and I think it's only going to get better from here. 
Um, so yeah, I feel like it's it's about the vibe kind of like I really I love all the people here. Like my professors are great and actually care about us. And I think yeah, I think it was a good fit, and it'll get better next year. <laughs> Um, at first, I was a little nervous just because I do kind of tend to second guess myself. And I think also um, something that kind of made me hesitant about my school was that um, we do have like a really high acceptance rate. When I applied, it was like in the 70s, but now it's like, I think like 96 or something like that. It's really high. And um, there's kind of this whole, it's, there's kind of this whole idea um, kind of not just in our town, but across like a lot of different schools and high schools that like a lower acceptance rate is better. So I was kind of struggling a little bit with that. And I was like, do like, like, um, kind of just like thinking about like struggling with what I wanted to do, which was go to the school and kind of feeling that pressure to like maybe try and aim for something that was like quote unquote higher. But I think I knew, I, I just knew that this was like the right place for me. And I totally, I'm so glad I ended up going here. I think it's been a perfect fit. I've had a great time here. And I've kind of realized that the college application process, while it seems like a really big thing, you know, when you're in it and you're always thinking about acceptance rates and like essays and SAT scores and that, once you get to college, like nobody cares, like it doesn't matter, you forget about it. It, the, the whole, the, the playing field kind of levels and everything restarts. And I haven't thought about any of that stuff in a really long time. So it's, it's very temporary, you know, a lot of the thoughts you have when you are applying and a lot of the stresses that you have when you are choosing where to go. My school is definitely a good fit for me. I love it here. I think it's a really good distance from home. Um, for me. So that's something to consider. Um, I feel like academically challenged, but also I found like good people that like um, help me study. I've found that it's a really good balance between like work and um, extracurriculars and like the sports. So it's definitely like a well-balanced school, which is good for me. And then finally, uh, do you all have any words of wisdom, anything you do differently, anything you learned for thinking about these um, high school sophomores, juniors, possibly seniors, uh, and where they are right now, where you all were one to two years ago? Um, well, this is kind of more words of wisdom for once you like are at college, but there is nothing wrong with transferring. Like what, like my best friend here is transferring next year. And I know she was definitely worried about like what people would think and like, like would people think that she like failed or like made the wrong decision, but like there's nothing wrong with that. Like sometimes you just aren't at the right place and like trying to find that right place is more important than like suffering at a place you don't like. Um, I kind of said a few of them in the last um, question, but I have a few more if it's okay. I think another thing that I didn't really think about until I got to school was the idea of doing community college for a bit and then transferring somewhere. Um, Cause that's a very popular option at my school because you know, it is an art school and it is kind of on the expensive side. Um, I've, there have been a lot of people who just go to community college, get their gen eds out of the way. And then, you know, they come here and they've saved a ton of money. And, you know, I've even had um, my girlfriend who is from hand also, who she goes here. She ended up coming here for the first year. She went back, she did some classes at Gateway over the summer and she got a ton of like her gen eds out of the way. She saved a ton of money. So even if you already are at school or even if you already are committed somewhere, um, doing a few classes over the summer at community college can go a long way. Um, and then I feel like I had something else, but I don't, oh, um, if you wanna pursue art, um, I know it's hard to convince your parents but there, it, it, it is possible. It is an option. There are a lot of artistic careers out there that aren't just, you know, starving artists. There are a lot of like corporate art jobs. There are a lot of, you know, jobs working in companies. When you think about it, really everything we interact with was designed by someone. It was made by someone um, from the apps on our phone to like the clothes we wear. And I, it's, it's not as hard to pursue as you may think. It is challenging, but it is definitely possible. So 
don't let anyone tell you it's not. I think something I would say is to just listen to yourself and feel what is right for you. I remember one of the schools I got into, um, everyone was like, you need to go there, like said all this stuff to me. And then when I went there and I didn't like it and I ended up here, everyone was like, I can't believe that you didn't choose that school. But if it's not right for you, it's not right for you. And you just need to go with what you feel is best, um, even if other people don't think so. Well, thank you so much to our panelists uh, for all of that great information. Uh, the plan with the guidance department was to show this video uh, during your Paul period. So I'm hopeful that your guidance counselors are now available to answer any questions that you may have um, after hearing our panelists speak. And um, good luck to you all as you pursue your college dreams. Thank you again to our panelists. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs>